afternoon, folks. Big Bo with RVs with Big Bo at Parkway RV Center. And guys, I've got another nice little small Class C motorhome we're going to review today. And literally the Mercedes Benz of a Class C motorhome. This is an absolutely beautiful 2014 Forest River Solera 24R. And this is a uh, pretty loaded out little Class C, guys. And it only has 19,000 miles it is built on the Mercedes Benz 3500 Sprinter chassis. Got the three liter uh, turbo diesel. Does have, uh, I believe, 188 horsepower. 325 pound feet of torque. This thing will run down the road like you wouldn't believe with 19,000 miles. Mercedes Benz actually designed this chassis with a practical service life of 500,000 miles. You've got 19,000 of those miles used up. Needless to say, you're never gonna wear this machine out. It does have the uh, Mercedes-Benz automatic transmission, dually rear end, very, very stable. It's 24 inches, or 24 feet, 11 inches long. Nice power awning. Man, beautiful multi-stage full body paint. That was a very expensive option. Most of the Solaris you see for sale, especially on RV Trader, are not full body paint. And they're more money than this one with three times the miles. So. Uh, tires look great. Got a power step. I've got a uh, got the bays open so you can check it out. I mean, it is it is a used motor home. It's not brand new, guys. Uh, a couple of things I've got to do to it. I'll show you one of them real quick. It does have this diamond shield on the front, and you know it looks clear and when it's brand new, but when it gets some age on it, it starts getting darker. And I'm gonna have something done with that, guys. Um, even though it's pretty expensive to have that done, I will get that uh, took care of for you. That end up there, and right here on the sides, on both sides, and um, that's about it for the outside. You see, guys, a little bit of storage in here. I mean, traditionally these don't have a ton because it's a smaller motorhome. Got a 3.6 LP generator by Onan. A whole whopping 55 hours on it. Huge outside storage bay right here, guys. I do like the drain plugs in them so you can just take a hose to it, rinse it out. This is your rear power slide out. It does have a queen bed in it and it also has a slide topper. Does have a 4,200 pound tow capacity hitch on the back. So you can tow you a little toad behind it, something like that. You can see your second main slide with the slide topper. This is just the other end of that. 30 amp power cord. It does have the auto changeover, so when you crank your generator, you don't have to plug your power cord into your uh, generator. Like you do a lot of Class C's. Uh, tires look great. Uh, just filled up propane. So don't have to worry about that. You know, it's got a cab over, but not a really big cab over, so it's gonna be more aerodynamic than your average Class C. You notice how you got that right there. And that helps a lot with your fuel mileage. You know, this is the most fuel efficient Class C you can buy. And what I'm reading, and guys, I, let me go ahead and clarify this. I want you to do, do your own research on this because when you start reading research on the internet that, that is put in by people who own these, it's all matter of opinion. Nothing's verified, nothing's for sure. So. I can't guarantee the results from what I'm reading online because manufacturers, unfortunately, do not, most manufacturers don't put post fuel mileage of RVs. I wish they would, but they don't. So just take it with a grain of salt, do your own research and draw your own conclusions. But from the research that I'm reading, uh, depending on speed, terrain, if you're towing something or not towing something, uh, people are, are averaging at higher speeds, 70 miles an hour plus, they're getting 12, 13 miles per gallon at under 70, which is where I most of the time drive. Uh, people are claiming 14, 15, 16 miles per gallon. Again, guys, that's not verified. That's people posting on forums and reviews. So obviously individual results will vary depending on your driving style and you know the terrain, wind, towing, not towing, things like that. Power step. Works great, I do have the AC running. 
let's look inside and one reason why i was able to get this thing at such a good deal that i'm able to sell it at such a good deal is because it had that dreaded flaking furniture problem well it doesn't have it anymore i spent a little over two thousand dollars and had all the original furniture professionally reupholstered and it's and in fact the color matched exactly uh to everything that's in here so all brand new upholstery you know that's something no other dealer is going to do on a used motorhome and um 19 thousands uh some odd miles i don't have the key in the switch and i'll show you why here in a minute but you can see guys brand new upholstery it does have um all rubber mat up front so very easy to keep clean this being a mercedes benz you've got independent front suspension you've got anti-roll technology uh, you've got uh, four wheel abs you've got a lot of technology that the ford and chevrolets of this era did not have and um of course you've got a lot of power and a little motor that's one reason why you get such great fuel miles and yes guys i know diesel motor homes um fuel costs a little more than gas but you get a lot better fuel mileage i mean you drive this thing right you'll get double what a gas motor home will get on fuel it depends on your speed and how you drive now guys i'm i'm a slow driver i'm a very conservative driver and it's not not because i'm cheap because i'm not um you know whether if something gets five miles a gallon or 15 miles a gallon it's not going to make or break me i don't buy an rv to save on gas if i was going to do that i'd buy a four-cylinder honda civic throw a tent a cooler and a sleeping bag in the truck and take it camping if i was worried about fuel mileage but you know if every little bit helps so uh you know these things have 26 gallon tanks they got a great fuel range and uh, still have good power you know that's what surprises me and yes we are going to test drive it later in the video uh, is how much power these little class c's have i mean they will literally keep up with a v10 with a motor that's less than half the size and have just as much torque so pretty cool i'm gonna shut this door well i'll leave i have to close it's got a shock on it i have to have both hands for it and now one thing i gotta do in here guys i've got one blind right here that's messed up i'm gonna have one of my carpenters restring that uh you do have a sleeper sofa and i do have the table and uh a leg that goes right here so uh don't worry about that that's included with it. it's in great shape i mean this is a higher end motorhome you do have the corian countertops there's all your remote controls countertop extender You've got the cherry cabinets you do have a 13,500 bte roof air here's some books and manuals three burner stove top and an oven that doesn't look like it's ever been cooked on this since that's an oven this will be a microwave i uh, do have a tv and you can see that it works and it does have a built-in dvd player privacy curtain cab over looks great this is a full-size bed so you can sleep two up here two on the couch two in the back so you know under 25 feet and that's when you're driving down the road with the rear slide in you can still sleep six got a six cubic foot rv refrigerator freezer and it should be getting cold I've had it on long enough to see if it works, which we guarantee it to work anyway. Uh, yeah, nine degrees, eight degrees. I don't think that's an issue. Now the refrigerator is probably not had a chance to get cold yet. Nope, it hadn't. But it's a few hours behind, guys. 99% of the time when the freezer's getting cold, the refrigerator just needs a few more hours to catch up. It takes these things six to eight hours before both the refrigerator and the freezers at operating temp. And uh, I mean, you can see guys, I'm blowing cold air out. Cause you gotta realize it is in the nineties today. It's cloudy, but sunny right now. You can see from the skylight. So it's, it's hot on this roof. And we're getting low fifties. I was down in the forties earlier when I checked it while I was taking pictures, but now it was cloudy then. So we're getting nice and cold. Uh, we do have a walkthrough. I guess you call it a walkthrough bathroom because you got an outside vanity. Medicine cabinet. All the lights work so far that I've touched. 
does have a little bit of step up because of that large storage on the outside. A neo angle shower with a skylight it has a nice tall roof. The Medic RV toilet. Here's your closet, drawer space, 60 by 75 inch queen bed. So this is very close to a residential queen bed. Now guys, when this slide out is in, of course you can't use this bed. The mattress folds up in half and, I, and I'll show you what that looks like here in a little bit. And here's your thermostat. Now guys, let me correct something real quick. It has a heat pump. That means it's a 15,000 BTU, not a 13.5. So you do have the upgrade AC. Day night shades in here look good. You do have a solid sliding door for privacy, which is locked. Um, NADA on this thing is um, 81,000 and change in low retail with no, and this is no added options, guys. Shut this door. <laughs> well, in theory, that would have worked good, except the screen door shut and the big door came open. They, this door, those shocks on this door, you can tell has not been used much. But book on this thing is 81,000 and change. And let me flash that up real quick. So guys, you can see I am just barely over low retail with 19,000 miles. Of course, diesels, there's no up mileage adjustment, which I, that doesn't make sense to me, but there isn't because obviously one with 19,000 miles is worth more than one with 60 or 70,000 miles. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree? But in a, of course, I don't agree with JD Powers or NADA anyway. Um, but you can see I'm way under book and uh you go on rv trader guys you know i do my price checker tool and there are five 2014 24 r solaris for sale in the country right now every single one except one is just plain white which the full body paint to me looks so much better and is several thousand dollars extra when it's new so obviously it's worth more used now guys i try to be the lowest priced one in the country on any time i post something on there because of the extra money I've had to spend on this thing, it's gonna cost me a lot to get that diamond shield fixed. I had all this furniture redone and, um, and stuff like that. Obviously, I'm 69.9, it's a pretty lean deal, so I can't really drop underneath that price. There is one on there for 67.9, so I do have the second lowest price one on there at time of video production. But let me tell you three things about that other one on there, if you see it, three things about it. A it's got 56, almost 57,000 miles on it. So that's three times the mileage for two grand less. B, it's white, not full body paint. So the full body paint is easily worth the two grand difference. The mileage is worth about, mine's probably worth seven to $10,000 more just because mine's got one third the miles. And C, and this is a big one guys, it's listed at a dealership. It's not ripoff world, but it's one that's just as well known for adding, you know, not counting your sales tax, which is going to be three or four or five thousand dollars, but as well known, you might as well add another twelve to fifteen thousand dollars at sixty-seven nine price on that other dealer's lot. By the time they add fees and upsells, extended warranties, gap insurance, tire and wheel protection packages, and all this other stuff, that they're pretty much going to almost force you to buy to buy that unit for 67.9 so to buy that unit for 67.9 you're going to have 85 well probably close to 90 by the time you figure in your sales tax grand in that 67.9 motorhome you're going to have close to ninety thousand dollars in it by the time you pull out of there with it we're here even though mine's two thousand dollars more it's going to be about twenty thousand dollars less if that makes sense or $15,000 less because I don't have any fees and I don't have any upsells. Let me tell you something, guys. Those extended service contracts, those gap insurance, uh, tire and wheel packages, roadside assistance, vacation packages, and all those other packages they try to sell you 
when you buy a new or used RV, say no to them. I'll tell you why. First of all, none of them are dealership exclusive items. If you want to buy those separate away from the dealership, you can do so without um, without really with, for a fraction of the cost because the dealership, like say a extended service contract, for example. Just on my experience, where we used to sell them, uh, an uh, say a four or five year extended service contract on a motor home like this, the dealership's going to pay around fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars for it. That's what the warranty company is going to charge the dealership, say fifteen hundred dollars. That dealership's going to turn around and sell you that same warranty to you for eight to ten thousand dollars. Now. Let me, ask, let me tell you something, and, and just, just think about this for a second. That warranty company is only making $1,500 selling that warranty. Do you really think that warranty company is going to pay a claim without fighting it tooth and nails? Because they only made $1,500. Dealership made, you know, seven or $8,000 when they resold it to you. But that warranty company only made $1,500. You know, of course not. You don't believe me? Go on YouTube, guys. There are so many videos out there where people have turned in claims through these aftermarket warranty companies and they were all denied, denied, denied. So they put videos out there reviewing it. And the, the way they write those service contracts up and all the fine print makes it almost impossible to, uh, to get anything covered. Now they might cover something small, like, a, uh, like say your radio goes out. And of course, they'll charge you a deductible. That's probably what it would cost you to fix a radio yourself. <laughs> but that's how they make money. They don't get money. They don't make money by paying claims. They make money by um, by collect by selling the warranty to the dealership, who turned around and sold it to you for four or five times the cost. And so many people are spending all this money on these warranties instead of putting that money up in a savings account or something like that and just drawing on it when they need to have something repaired on their RV. And not only that, but if you pay cash for your repairs instead of, uh, instead of using a so-called quote-unquote warranty service contract, but most independent shops don't work with them, and um, when they do work with them, that gets put on the back burner because they know that it's going to be months before they get paid. They're in no hurry to work on your coach. So if you're making payments on your coach, while sitting in a dealer service yard for three months, four months, waiting on parts and warranty authorization, they're doing cash service customers in and out, in and out, in and out, because they know cash customers can go anywhere and get service work. That's who gets priority. So if you're a cash service customer, you're always priority at an independent shop or a dealership. So anytime you're a service customer, cash is king. May not be in sales because uh, because when you when you pay cash to buy an RV, a dealership loses thousands and thousands of dollars in profit that they make on financing RVs. So, you know, that's the worst thing you can do in 2022, especially these big corporate dealers, is pay cash for one because you're going to pay a lot more. Um, but, of course, not here. We don't care how you pay. But uh, other dealers, yeah. They, in fact, they'll charge you thousands of dollars more on the price. In some cases, and I've heard this the other day from a customer, they were flat out refused to sell it to you unless you finance it. I've even, um, lately there's a dealer that's been advertising on an RV trader that they're not even going to sell you an RV unless you go through one of their lenders. In other words, you come in with $100 bills or a cashier's check from your bank, your money's not good there. They don't accept it. You've got to go through their banks or you're not buying an RV from that dealer. And it's a big dealer too, big corporate dealer with locations all over the U.S., and they do that because they mark the interest rates up on financing. I mean, they mark it up one or two percent on, you know, a seventy, eighty thousand dollar motor home. That's a huge chunk of change that they're making on profit, and that you're overpaying for financing by thousands and thousands of dollars. And the dealer gets put that right in their pocket. That's how they get you guys. That's how you go in for a sixty-nine nine motor home and leave owing ninety grand plus. That's why more and more people every year come to Parkway RV Center, guys. We keep things easy, simple, and done. We, we don't operate like that. We're old school, guys. 
$69.9 plus applicable sales tax. It doesn't matter if you pay cash, if you trade, if you finance through our lenders, or your bank or credit union. In fact, I highly encourage all of my viewers and all of our customers, before you go RV shopping, whether us or anybody else, check with your bank or credit union because a lot of local banks and credit unions, because of the RV craze over the past few years, have really upped the game on RV financing. I mean, they're doing the same long-term low-rate financing as many of the nationwide banks at a, at a lot lower rate because you don't have to worry about the dealer marking the rate up and getting their hand in the cookie jar. I mean, that's going to save you a ton of money right there, guys. That's why, you know, and that's exactly why, and it's the same way in the car business, too. You ever wonder why you can go to your own bank and get a car loan for a lower rate or even an RV loan for a lower rate than a dealership? Well, the answer is simple. Because the dealer can get you the same rate, but they can't mark it up. If they mark it up, it's going to be a higher rate. That's why. Because the dealership's marking the rates up. <laughs> well, they didn't mark the rates up. They're not going to make no money, so why go through the trouble? Why just let you go to your bank then? But anyway. Well, I try to give you advice. Obviously, not everybody takes it because the people are they're still buying these new RVs and getting ripped off and paying, you know, $15,000 over the advertised price every single day. But at the same time, heck, if nobody ever bought new ones, they, they wouldn't, we wouldn't have used ones today. Um, but this one, guys, like I said, it time you get the out the door, pay out the door, this will be the lowest priced one in the country. Uh, 2014 Solera 24R by thousands. And um, pretty nice one, too. So what I'm going to do, guys, is it's 24, it's, it's 24 hours, it's 24 feet, 11 inches long. 19,000 miles, 55 hours on generator, and uh, includes our major systems inspection. So what we're gonna do on top of the things that I say we're gonna fix, the diamond shielding on the front, the blind over here. Uh, what I'm gonna do, guys, I'm gonna pause the video for a minute. Well, let me backtrack a minute. I tell you, this heat's getting to me today. Um, what I'm gonna do is it includes, for the 69.9 price, includes and this is something that other dealer for 67.9 doesn't include includes our major systems inspection and what that is is we make sure all the major systems that can ruin your camping trip works at time of sale we're going to make sure your generator runs puts out like it's supposed to make sure your roof air runs puts out like it's supposed to we're going to make sure your refrigerator freezer gets to operating temperature we're going to check both your slide outs make sure they work we're going to make sure your plumbing systems work. Water heater, water pump, faucet, spigots, toilet, all that. We're going to check the step, the drivability. And I even took it one step further, guys, and made sure things work that we don't cover, like the lights. They all work. The television, the awning, stuff that we usually don't cover, I've checked for you. They work. Power awning works great. And let me show you something about the TV. Because this is a 14, it's still got the old style crank up TV antenna. I'm gonna show you an old RVer's trick. Because you do not want to pull out with your antenna up because you can snag a low lying power line and um, you've got a hole in your roof where your antenna used to be. And I've seen it happen, I hate to see how many times over the decades I've been in this business. So, an old RVer's trick that I use is a uh, keys aren't in the switch. That's why I couldn't crank it up earlier. I've got them up there. So that means when I'm ready to go, I want to grab the keys and crank it. They're hanging up there, and I remember, oh crap, i got to put the antenna down. That saved my behind quite a few times over the years. So, a little trick you can use. So anyway, um, guys, let me pause the video for a minute. Let me bring the rooms in, bring the slides in close all these bays uh the awning in and everything show you what it looks like with the rooms in then i'll grab one of my guys we'll take it for a little test drive and see how it drives which 19,000 miles i already drove it earlier to get propane i know it drives great but i want you to see it for yourself so hang tight guys i will be right back and in the meantime um well it's gonna be instant for you but when you get done with the video make sure you hit that subscribe button smash us a thumbs up 
feel free to comment share on social media hey it costs you absolutely nothing to hit that subscribe button it helps support my channel Ke keeps me doing what i'm doing and you know it makes me you know i'm different than everybody else guys i'll show you the good the bad and the ugly about rvs i give you advice on how to save money on rving um i give you real information from an experienced rver i'm not one of these guys that and these sales you know you see these sales people doing rv reviews on youtube that do all new ones and, and you know and you can tell these folks have not have never owned an rv they've never even spent the night in one and that's true you know probably nine out of ten or more people you talk to in the rv industry the salespeople and managers and, and everything else have never even spent the night in an rv much less owned one and they're out there trying to sell you all this stuff and they they don't know what the world they're talking about i mean you ask them anything that's not in a factory sales brochure they just get a blank look on their face and they go ask a manager and that manager gets a blank look on their face because he or she doesn't know because they don't own an rv they're not rvers you know you come here guys we're a mom and pop independent store almost everybody here is an rv owner or has been an rv owner i've got one myself mine's this size right here mine's 25 footer with a with a v10 ford um and i've owned 38 foot class a's fifth wheels pop-ups hybrid travel trailers fifth wheels i've been an rv owner for well over 25 years and i work on a lot of my own stuff i mean i deliver these things i bought them i've sold them i've been on both sides of that desk I've been service manager, I've been sales, I've, I've done it all, guys. Finance manager, I don't mind sharing that information. I, I, I mean, I'm probably the most rounded, you know, person on YouTube as far as reviewers. And I actually show real used RVs. I show the price, I go over the pricing with you. You know, 69.9 plus applicable sales tax. Now, guys, there's no fees here, no dock fees, prep fees, all those fees, 100% dealer profit. The only thing we do have to charge if you are a Georgia resident, that's because the state makes us, is a $100 highway impact fee, or $50 to $100, depending on your county, and a $40 to $50 tag and title fee, and that's Georgia residents only. If you're out of state, you don't pay either one of those. So uh, anyway, let me pause the video bring the rooms in, bring the awnings in, all that good stuff, and I'll be right back and I'll show you how to do that. So hang tight, see you in just a second. All right, everybody, I've got everything buttoned up just as the rain hit. Um, <laughs> you know, as always, guys, certain precautions with any unit with a slide out. Of course, this, this unit's got two slide toppers on both slide outs, so you don't know where he's there. So uh, if you don't have slide toppers on your, um, on your slide outs of course you know contrary to popular belief they don't really do much for water that's what your slide out seal is for but slide toppers actually are designed to keep limbs and leaves and sticks debris from getting on top of your slide out and damaging your seal when you bring it in or out so you know if you're at a campground somewhere parked under some trees you always want to climb up on a ladder uh, make sure there's no debris on top of your slide make sure if there is you know a battery powered leaf blower uh, or, or even just old-fashioned broom will we'll, uh, clean them off very very well before you bring your rooms in so but no worries here because there's no trees around us but um, but what you do what you do is you go outside go ahead and bring all your awnings in uh, make sure all your outside bays are closed latched and locked this is just general rule of thumb stuff that I've done for 20 something years make sure everything's secure uh, then you want to once you've done all that you come inside slide out procedure is really easy on this one motor off parking uh, parking brake doesn't have to be set on this one you do want to make sure your seats or your front seat is clear which it is and um, you come over here to your main control area and your main slide out is right here and you push it in and it's electric slide you bring it all the way in you know as with any slide out ever made you either bring it in or out you, all the way in or all the way out there is no in between if it's in between that seal cannot connect and it will leak even brand new one if that seal cannot connect it will leak if you can't get your slide out all the way out bring it all the way in guys that's just part of own, that's just part of owning an rv with a slide out guys it's either all the way it's all they're all out or all in no in between 
once you bring it in you go to your back slide out as you can see the bed is uh the mattress folds in half pretty much does it automatically and you got a white switch right here same way with it bring it all the way in and even though it's in you can still kind of get to your rear closet right here um you lose your bed of course but you still got your sofa and your cab over bed and uh, you still got access to pretty much everything through here your bathroom your kitchen uh you can still fold your couch down into a bed and you, you lose your mirror right there big whoop um other than that everything's the same so anyway let me crank this bad boy up we're gonna take it for a drive get one of my guys to ride with us so stay tuned and uh see you from the driver's seat all right everybody now we're going to test drive this 2014 solera and i got my good buddy shane he's going to be our cameraman for today and uh, if you're interested in this solera show him some love and give him a call or a text if you're interested in it shane what's your number buddy it's 423-347-8478 and i want to mention one thing about this mercedes that you that i personally can't do in a ford or chevrolet and i don't know if you noticed how much room is down here i'm going to show you something I can't do this in the Ford or Chevrolet. I actually turn and get out and walk outside like this. I can't do that on anything but a uh, Mercedes. Not without a lot of grunting and groaning and, and, <laughs> and twisting my ankle and, and bumping every part of my body. So I just always like to mention that about a Mercedes. And I love driving these things. It's basically like driving a minivan to me. I mean, they think it's so cool how well they drive. But anyway, just thought I'd mention that. This thing's got a good ice cold uh, dash here. And we're gonna take it down the road. I mean, this is basically a class C that drives like a class B if, if I had to describe it. Great visibility, it's just a huge windshield, great mirrors. We got a long line of traffic coming this way. And guess what? We'll get out of here just in time to hit the red light. You gotta love it. <laughs> yeah, these are great for somebody that's worried about driving, not used to driving something this big. I mean, these are so easy to drive. Um, especially if you're, you know, for first time or something like that. I mean, you can literally drive these things just about two fingers if you wanted to. Great power steering, turning radius, it's incredible. Probably one of the best turning, this is the best turning radius mini class C. I mean, uh, these things are so easy to handle and drive. Independent front suspension, four wheel ABS, definitely one of the more safer ones too, multiple airbags. I thought you ever want to get in an accident, but I love the turbo pickup on these things too. I said guys, I mean this is just so easy.
it's always crazy they can get this kind of power and torque out of a, a three liter V6 motor, a diesel motor. Great brakes too. I'm hoping we can get on it a little bit and get on the interstate, but I know this thing will hit 60, no problem. back there either. You know, usually with the motorhome, you hear stuff rattling and squeaks and there's hardly any of that in this. And we'll get the cruise control here in a second. Let's see, we're at 60 right now. And right at 65. No problem. Get the cruise control. Accelerator a little bit. About 66, 67. The accelerator works. Turn that air down a little bit because I think I, I hear the I hear the air conditioner more than I hear the outside wind noise. Literally driving it with two fingers. I mean, that's how easy it is to steer it. If y'all have never driven one of these Mercedes guys, you, you got to drive. You got to drive one of these. I'm telling you, it's something else. We'll hit the brakes here in a second. Try those out. Transmission shifts great, brakes feel great, I don't have any vibrations, I'm not pulling, I'm smooth. Well, I think it's hitting every check on my checklist as far as uh, running and driving and, and uh, handling and everything like that, but don't take my word for it, guys. Come out driving for yourself. Uh, call Shane before coming out looking, make sure somebody else hadn't beat you to it. Uh, Shane, what's your number, buddy? It's 423-347-8478. Call them with any questions. Call them, make sure it's available. Um, thank y'all so much for watching, guys. Hit that subscribe button, smash the thumbs up. Thanks for riding along with us, and look forward to seeing you here in beautiful Ringgold, Georgia.